Hey, I'm Gia Goodrich and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give you a tutorial on cinematic color grading. Yes, that professional color grade, that cinematic photo look. All of that beautiful, beautiful color finesse that takes your images from amateur to professional. We're gonna make your images look super professional because what the camera sees is not the final photo and not what clients want to receive. So I'm gonna show you how to do that today and we're actually gonna do it before we open it into Photoshop. This is really the key to make your photos look cinematic and it's not as hard as you think. I'm gonna show you this technique and how we got from the image on the left to the image on the right. And this is before we even pull it into Photoshop. This is just using Adobe Camera Raw. So this is the image coming through the camera just the way that the camera recorded the information. Now you can tell her skin tone is patchy. There's a lot of, there's lack of contrast and it's really desaturated. And just the colors aren't attractive and it, they don't have that cinematic feel. Even though all the information is there to enable us to do it, we aren't at that place yet. So in Adobe Camera Raw, when you first open it, it's gonna take you to this panel. Now, this is really the panel that you want to get really familiar with, and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit more about this. Um, most of the other ones you'll want to ignore, and I'll tell you why. What you're really going to pay attention to is this presets panel. The way the panel looks, this is new with Adobe Creative Cloud 2018. Before it wasn't broken out and so it was just like a jumbly old mess. Um, but now it's really cool because it's broken out in this way. So if you look, you can just scroll through and see, okay, already we have these presets they are gonna give it quite a different feel. Now, my secret weapon is Visco. So you might be familiar with Visco because of the iPhone Android app. Those allow you to take your iPhone images and really transform it. What a lot of people don't know is Visco was originally created for photographers who are using digital to simulate film. So there are amazing presets for Adobe Camera Raw and for Lightroom. Now I have these and you can get different packs. They're around 59 dollars a pop totally worth it in my opinion and I've been using these presets for I mean easily two years or something so I'll show you here a lot of these are custom ones that I've made but this is what they look like in Visco and this is the this is a color pack that goes through these different films that are simulated and you can just see me scrolling here the wide range of differences. Now what these are doing is they're taking these different panels like the, the effects, the lens correction, split toning, um, HSL adjustments, which is hue saturation, <laughs> hue saturation and luminance. Um, it's taking all of this information and what they've done is they've matched, they've, they looked at scans of film and then they matched the digital. So what you get are these really thoughtful presets that you can just plug and play. So I've never found one to be my absolute go-to without some customization. So what I do is find one that gets us pretty close, like let's say here, click on it, and then this is when we're gonna use these other panels. So this is the one that we really wanna pay attention to, color temperature and tint, obviously. So if it's feeling a bit cool, dragging it up, warming it up a little bit, and vice versa. Then exposure slider to see where we want to sit. Contrast, less contrast really opens up those shadows, more kind of makes it crunchy. Highlights, let's save those a bit. And then shadows, again, is gonna impact the, the darker tonal information. And blacks, same thing, what is that black point? Are we crunching it? What those presets do is give you this really solid foundation, but from here you can really customize. Then going back into the presets panel, all you have to do, since we're here, is go in and say save settings. Now, once you hit save, you can give it an appropriate name. And I am not the best at this, as you can see. I have, some of them are named with the file name, which always starts with the date. Some of them are you know, labeled with what the content is. Now, if, like you, I was a star from scratch, 
I would do a filing system like they have where there's a letter that indicates some sort of classification. So let's say C for commercial work. And then I would put in file information. So then I can really easily scroll down them because when you're like me and you get to a lot, um, yeah, there's a lot to scroll through. So here by default, it says the file name information. Let's just say because it's commercial. Boom, we put that in there. Now it is available in our user presets panel. And if we scroll down, we find it right here. And they've added this new functionality, which is awesome, which you can start it and add it to your favorites. And then it populates in this little album of top favorites you have your go-tos. I went ahead and did that same technique, found a base preset, and then adjusted those few sliders just to show you with this one image the different looks and feels that we can get. So this one, for example, this one is actually my favorite. It has a little bit of a warm tone in the skin, but overall a little bit of a cyan, especially in the shadows. That's really emblematic of a lot of my work and I love it. Of course, this is all gonna be personal taste. This one is really bright and there's a lot less information tonally that's going on in the skin, so it appears more smooth. And this is kind of more like a bubblegum poppy feeling. Then this one is an interesting look. In the mid-tones there, I really brought out a lot of the texture. So now you can really start to see the freckles. It feels like a little bit of that gritty fashion feel. Now, this obviously means that you would have to do more skin retouching because you are really seeing every little spot. And even though she's a perfect model, there's still work in there that you would really need to take care of. But this is a look that has more of that you know, nylon magazine type of feel. Here's another one. It has sort of this lifestyle, beachy feel to it. And then a hardcore black and white, which is really bringing out the contrast there. So you can see in five minutes, I pulled out all these different possibilities. Now, could I have made them all from scratch? Absolutely. Would it have been a waste of time? Yes, because Visco has done such an amazing job of doing it for you. So you can start with color grades that are already, you know, 90% of the way dialed in for you. And the name of the game really when it comes to commercial photography is about making sure that you are partitioning your energy energy and your time. But all you have to do is click on one and then go back into here and just make those adjustments. So for this, for me, it's way too saturated. So pulling that back. Then the blacks are a little lifted. So let's bring those down a, a little bit. And looking at that, let's go into the hue and saturation slider. And what's cool about this one is you can just move tones and just see where they sit for you. So see how this made her skin a lot more peachy. We can bring it back so it has a little more of a yellow hue. What's great about doing this in the raw dialog box is that you're doing it when you have maximum color information. By the time you bring it into Photoshop, you're already losing and you're needing to commit. So instead, doing it here when you have maximum color information, you have all those tones available to you, really is optimal. Now the one thing I will say is never, never, never do grain here. Knock it all the way back to zero. Now that is kind of a surprise because a lot of these come with grains as preset. The reason I'm telling you not to do grain as a preset is because you want to have all the textural information for your retouching available to you. Once you add grain, it creates a repeating pattern that just makes it a lot more difficult and is not cool. You wanna add grain at the very end. So I take my grain all the way down to zero. Then I click this box right here at the bottom and make sure it's set to open as a smart object. This means that now you're not working destructively, you don't have to commit to this. You press okay, it opens up as a smart object here, which means you're able to go back into it. So if we go before, that was the original color grade, after, you can see there's tremendous flexibility in this. Then if you decide, hey, I don't really like it, you can double click again and you have this full editing capacity. So let's say, mm, I realized I needed to bring the whites down a bit, perfect. Signing off on that, okay, we're good.
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up in the comments because that actually means a lot to me and it does help. And also leave a comment below and let me know what you're working on, what your superpower area in photography is, and what you're gonna use these techniques on. Better yet, if you can send me a link to an image with your straight out of camera and your color rated version, I would love to see how you're using these techniques and rocking it. And be sure to subscribe and turn the bell on so you'll be notified when I have new tutorials and things for you. That professional cut of... <sighs> okay, that prof... <laughs> Hey!